That I nah, never nah. see you wear your own nah. stuff. See, why? I, said, I nah. think that's the difference between between us. Like, yeah. I wear all my shit. Yeah, yeah why would you? It's like. I don't know if George Lucas plays with Star Wars toys. Mm. He <laughs> what? <laughs> what kind of horrible shit comparison is that? And why is Kermit Frost like, mmm, like he said something super insightful, super intelligent? He wasn't spitting. What he said was fucking idiotic. George Lucas doesn't play with Star Wars toys. What does that have to do with Star Wars offering? What does that have to do? What does that have to do with the quality of the Star Wars movies? What does that have to do with him enjoying the movies? And of, and of course, it's a terrible comparison because, you know, George Lucas is a very well-known nerd, a very well-known geek. He probably has like garages full maybe warehouse units full of memorabilia and toys and all sorts of malarkey because he fucking created that entire George um Star Wars universe. Same thing with someone like a uh, George R. R. Martin and shit when it comes to Game of Thrones or whatever it may be. So it's a pretty idiotic thing to say. And I just love how Kerwin sort of like echoed it like as if he says I think really crazy and amazing. Yeah, you're really spitting man. George Lucas doesn't even he doesn't even play with Star Wars. So how can you so like, are you aware that George Lucas also doesn't write most of the movies that are out now because that are in the star wars universe are you aware of that <laughs> like what what kind of terrible point that was that to make let's continue wrote invented the characters wrote the story yeah. created the world makes it so for me dim tears is a film for me it's a story <laughs> honestly i've only met tremaine maybe like a couple of times in my life he he knows a lot more of my other quote-unquote scene friends i don't really know him personally myself too much but he always did strike me as a kind of very kind of reasonable level-headed and somewhat intelligent dude i don't know what's happened to him in the last few years maybe it's a supreme stuff maybe it's because i've seen the way he's acted with the supreme stuff so maybe i'm looking at him with a different lens maybe it's because i've grown up a little bit and matured and you're starting to realize the people that you maybe quote unquote looked up to aren't as smart as you thought they were are maybe fallible just as you are blah -de blah 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 or maybe these people will always read acts but now that they're speaking a lot more you get to hear some of the things that they have to say and you're like, oh shit, you're an absolute redact, isn't it? You're, like, you're a legitimate redact. But with Tremaine, it's even weirder because he seems to be kind of somebody that seems to be really curious about the world around him. He tends to kind of think deeply about a lot of things going on around him, about his position, about his place in the world, about what he has to do during his time on this earth and how the brand is going to contribute to that. His voice, his friends, his family, the books he reads. He seems to be somebody that, you know, you would consider to be somewhat intelligent. And then he just sits there and just talks and you're like, bro, why do you sound dumb? But you come across smart on social media. Are you like LARPing as a, like an intelligent, cultured person is that what you're doing are you laughing but actually when it comes down to it when you're asked to sort of explain your methodology when you're asked to explain your outlook when you're asked to explain or rationalize your approach to certain things don't really have anything to say because you don't really think about what you do you just do what you do sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but there isn't a lot of thought that goes into what you're doing it maybe maybe that's the case maybe but i think how he's explaining it is absolutely redacted there is a way to explain it though there is a way to explain why you wouldn't wear your own clothes because you don't need to i think you should personally especially in streetwear i think we all get into streetwear personally for me i feel like you get into streetwear to start your own brand because you feel like something's missing either you feel like your voice is missing or you feel like there's something missing in that space and you want to fill that void so usually the thing that you want to fill the void of are the things that you would want to wear yourself so then you become the best ambassador possible for your own brand because you think, hey, I have really good taste level. I have, I'm, I think I'm a cool person, right? And then you hope by wearing and championing your own brand and filling this void, maybe you think there's not enough good brands that have great cargo pants. Maybe you think the size of the hats nowadays are too small and they don't accommodate for people that have big heads. Maybe you're really picky and finicky about the particular shape of a bomber jacket. You make that and then when you, as you're making it, you're wearing it testing it out and seeing how it works and shit and you're also promoting it and kind of being the ambassador for your brand and people are seeing it thinking you're cool wanting to wear it and then of course that then starts the cycle of your brand kind of picking up but it's a standard i think it might change or it might be a bit different when it's fashion i think fashion because the 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 maybe the the themes and the inspiration and the world building around it can be a very complex and very in-depth maybe there's a there's a utility and there's a 
yeah, m- maybe there's a utility to being a fashion designer and having a uniform. Like you just wear navy, you just wear white, you just wear all black, but it's not a brand. It's not anything crazy. It's just you wearing a fucking plain tee, jeans and black trainers. Maybe there's a utility to that because then you can pour all your creativity into creating this immersive world around your fashion collection and creating an immersive fucking fashion show experience, thinking about the music, thinking about the smell, the seating arrangements, um, the colors you the fonts the applique the finishes the trim the accessory all these sort of things it's probably beneficial if you're a fashion designer to probably not be too much into your personal because I, I there's probably a correlation between the designers who have like crazy and really cool personal style but then also have shitty fashion because they probably spend way too much time caring about their own personal style as opposed to pouring into the brand there are some that exist the first person that comes to mind is mark jacobs he has great personal style but he also has you know he's also a genius when it comes to fashion so you can't really begrudge him for that but i think of somebody like a uh, jw anderson jw anderson dresses in a pretty normal plain way but then his collections for his namesake brand and for Luebe are really out of this world, right? They're very, very, um, ex- um, I won't say even say eccentric. They're very kind of just out of the box, right? And very unconventional, very creative, very imaginative. But the way he dresses doesn't really reflect that. And, and I don't really think he actually even wears his own. I've never actually seen him wear those like, you know, those, um, those Luebe loafers, those mules with a really massive gold link chain at the front. I've never seen him wear them, but he designed them, I'm assuming. And they look fucking fantastic. I've never seen him wear those Luebe trousers with a really big um, turn up at the bottom with the cuffs and shit. But he just them and they look fucking fantastic so you don't need to wear your thing to promote your brand but i think when you're creating like sweatshirts and t-shirts and shit wear your brand promote it the fact that you're not wearing it makes me think that you you know it's lame you know you know it's lame type of thing you know it's kind of played out that's why you don't want to wear it because it's not like he only makes cotton reef sweats and shit he's also done like proper what you deem to be like cut and sew type of stuff where he's done like, you know, leather trousers, um, mesh shirts and stuff with our legacy button ups, all this sort of stuff. And he never wears it. It's like, bro, why wouldn't you want to wear your stuff and promote it and make it look cool and shit? It just, it's a weird thing. I don't understand it, but he can explain it, but he's not explaining it well. Story. Yeah. And I'm telling it. And then I think I just like, I'm on to the next film, you know, and I get my greatest joy from seeing people wear it. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like, exactly, like, exactly. Like, exactly. When I see kids wearing my stuff or my friends wearing it, that's watching you on the road. Cause but you can have it both ways. You could wear it yourself and you could see your people that you love wearing it and see fans wearing it. And it could still hit the same way. I don't see anything wrong with that. Like it might be, must be super cool to be walking down the street with your own garments and have somebody, you know, tap you on the shoulder and say, "Oh my God, where do you get that jacket from?" And you could be like, "Yeah, it's something that I made." Pass them your jet, pass them your card, show them your Instagram page, blah blah blah. That's pretty cool to do that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. But obviously, the actual real answer is probably that you know, most likely, if you're designing clothes and you're designing like I don't know, two seasons ahead. Maybe you're going to get bored of the stuff you're making and you don't really want to wear it now because you're kind of over it because you're thinking about other ideas. That's possible as well. You just don't want to wear it. But Tremaine likes to wear stuff. He's always posting his fits or he's always maybe pictured wearing cool things. It's not like he's not into like stepping out and stunting and putting a good fit on. So it's just like, why wouldn't you want, if you if you care about what the clothes you wear and you like presenting yourself in a certain way, why wouldn't you want to have your own clothes on when you're doing that? So you can maybe promote your brand and, you know, at the same time that you're getting papped down the street for like a street style picture. Why wouldn't you want to do that? It is, is like, you know, what when you work on something for so long and you see it for so long and like yeah. just down to every little yeah. stitching and yeah. little detail, yeah. like you've seen this thing for such a long time. Yeah. And I'm so, I'm the biggest fan of it yeah. before it comes out. Same. But once it comes out and then yeah. everyone got, got it. it, I'm over it. Over. Over. Mm. I agree with that, but I still think if you're a real clothes person, if you're really about this fashion shit, if you're really about this streetwear shit, clothes will always excite you. It doesn't matter how long you've, you're, you're, you've been mulling over the design of a hat or a pair of gloves or a long sleeve t-shirt. Like it's always going to excite you. You're going to be dreaming about, you know, what type of stitching you're going to be using. You're going to be dreaming about what sort of zip you're going to use. You're going to be dreaming about the packaging and shit. That won't stop you from dreaming about it. It won't stop you from thinking about it. It won't stop you from wearing it. So I just think a lot of these guys maybe 
are just getting to that stage in their careers or in their lives where they're becoming a little bit disillusioned to the scene, maybe becoming a little bit cynical, maybe becoming a little bit numb to the excitement that they once had. Because I'm sorry, if you're designing a little capsule collection for fucking Dover Street Market, nothing is not going to make you be excited about that. You know what I mean? Even if you're designing it two or three years in advance, the fact that you get to wear something that you know is not going to come out for another two or three years is exciting in itself. The fact that you have to maybe keep the news to yourself and not tell anybody about it until it gets officially announced is exciting and something to, you know, worth getting up for and being excited for in the first place. So I don't think what they're saying here is necessarily true. I think this is maybe more of a symptom of maybe being in the scene for a long time and kind of feeling a little bit over everything. I'm like, okay, what's the next thing? But yeah, but but there's also I've seen big up the guy from Cortez, um, the the founder of Cortez made a point on social media the other day where he basically said that maybe the reason why Tremaine can, maybe why it's okay for Tremaine not to wear his own things, Den Denim Tears, is because Denim Tears is overtly a political societal sort of like brand. That's what it's about in terms of like you know um, what you call it uh you know, I forgot what the tag name is, something about the black diaspora and shit, whatever it may be, right? So maybe that's why wearing it doesn't really make sense because it's more so a vessel for a sort of like political messaging and societal change and whatever it may be. I don't care. I don't think that's true personally. I just think deep down, like he thinks it's a bit played out and he feels maybe a little bit cringy wearing his own shit, which is really wild because it's also a bit of a talent in itself to be able to design cringy things that you yourself would not necessarily wear, but then to push it to other people to wear, you know, and to, and to sell it for an exorbitant amount as well. It's pretty wild. Um, but I think this maybe kind of goes to the whole approach of like not being your own biggest fan as well and kind of having this weird relationship around like fandom because it makes me remember the times when Virgil was around I always used to wonder like for all of the people that were around Virgil and Virgil always surrounded himself with loads of really cool you know influential kind of people who kind of contribute a lot to the culture and did really cool things in their own regard but all of those people he surrounded himself with I think with the exception of maybe like Lucas about I don't think there's many people in that grew that really wore anything that Virgil made from Off-White to Louis Vuitton but they were all like leeching next to him they were all fucking trying to stand next to him in pictures they were all there in parties together but you didn't see many of these guys supporting the things that he did even if it came to like a fucking Ikea collaboration and buying a carpet and all this sort of shit it never really happened and I always wondered like I wonder how he felt about that having all these quote-unquote so-called friends, but none of them actually support what you do. The real love that you do get, which might explain also why he always made time for fans. That's something I have to give Virgil a lot of credit for. He always went out of his way to be like, available and open speaking to fans like he would be dming with random people like all night long and shit he'd add or follow random people including myself all the time and shit and be kind of give people props i think that might be the reason why he did that because he knew the people around him who were maybe the cool people were kind of a bit choosy and a bit stingy and a bit stush when it came to supporting his actual brand but the actual fans were the ones that were down for supporting everything and really being loud about it like yeah i bought this belt i fucking love it like I can't, I can't think of any many people, many of his cool friends that had that fucking heart, that safety yellow belt thing. But a lot of us fans from the outside, we wore it. I know I did. I wore mine to death. I think I actually wore mine to the point where it fucking broke. But I don't think a lot of his friends wore it because they thought it was naff. They thought it was corny. They thought it was played out. So it must be a strange place to be in when you have your own brand and you want your friends to support you, but they don't really support you. And then they make it seem like, not supporting you is a cool thing to do because wearing your own things is kind of a bit played out. It's like, nah, bro, if I make something and I'm proud of it and I like what it looks like, I'm going to wear it. I want to be, I want to be my, I want to be my muse. You know what I mean? I want to be my own muse in the same way that Moa Loa does a really good job with her brand. I think a lot of the reason why her brand is really successful is because she's an inherently cool looking person. She has a, an inherently cool looking group of people around her as well as a crew. But I think Moa Loa does a really good job because she's really fucking cool herself so even though the the designs and the fashion isn't maybe the most you know out there thing she's not really trying to change anything really it's, you know it's kind of whatever i think her being cool um she's kind of got a bit of an aspirational maybe lifestyle and shit she approaches she carries herself in a certain way i think that is part of the reason why that that brand sells part of it is because she kind of 
sells it herself. She wears the shit herself. People want it and then they purchase it and Bob's your uncle, Granny Durant. So I find the whole like not wearing your own thing to be very, 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 very odd. But again, Tremaine is a very odd dude. So I guess it makes sense. So I guess it makes fucking sense. We've got another clip here from the same interview. This is from a round table. I'm actually going to react to the whole thing soon on this channel. So definitely keep an eye out for it. I'll definitely do a reaction to the whole round table. It featured Kerbin Frost, um, Bloody Osiris, ASAP Nas, and obviously Tremaine Emery from Dead in Tears. So in this particular one, they're talking about um, Virgil Abloh and his influence and stuff and why there won't be another one of him, um, you know, to ever kind of replace him or whatever else it may be. So let's play this clip. It should be a really interesting one. RIP Virgil. Let's fucking go. Some that doesn't get talked about enough, I think just like this society like post v post virgil almost like within a week of his passing it was like all right who's gonna be the next the next yeah. uh created like i saw it immediately and what was insane was like it wasn't just like people in instagram comments it's like people who knew him are like on the phone saying yeah but who do you think and i'm just like yo this this is not Pokemon. Like if you ask me, there ain't no feeling, no shoe. No, it'll never and, happen and, again. Never. And if we get anywhere close to that, it ain't gonna be no time soon. No. At least no. I mean, for what I can see right now. It wasn't just like his creative ability. No. It was more so, for me, the, the love that he showed. He was one of those guys that he was for the people. You know, like, and he didn't have no, he didn't have no pride and ego. And I think that's actually worse to say that. I think it's actually worse to say that there would never be another Virgil, not in a creative sense, but more so in a humane sense, because I feel like the humanity sense of him is something that could be easily re repl replicable. You could easily replicate somebody just being very nice and being very warm and being very open and really loving and really down to earth, which is what he was. One of the best things about, or one of the silver linings about, no silver linings, one of the things that kind of warmed my heart post Virgil passing, you heard no funny type stories about him and women or guys or anything. No funny type stories. Even though he was immersed in fashion, surrounded himself in all the flipping hottest models in the world and all the hottest fucking IG baddies and that kind of streetwear world, no one said anything funny style about him. He was always a pleasure and a gentleman to deal with, point blank period. That was fucking sick to see. You know, that's probably one of the things that a lot of us would like if we ever did pass anytime soon. You'd want people to speak about you well when you even not even if you're past, you want people to speak about you well, even when you're not in the room. And I think Virgil was able to achieve that. But I think it's pretty sad indictment on the scene and in the industry that ASAP Nas is saying that, no, it's not the creativity that's not going to be replaced or isn't replicable. It's the humanity. We, we, we're in an industry where like, regular we're in an industry where it's not normal for somebody like a Virgil to be that nice so don't expect it again don't expect somebody of his level of his standing of his clout status to be as personable down to earth chill nice to talk to a pleasure to deal with and all that my God, it won't happen again that's pretty wild but it's true unfortunately it's true and that's one of his main strong points i always said like he was one of those people that you and i think they exist in the scene in general those people that exist in the scene who you like him but his friends are cocks like he surrounded himself with a lot of people that you probably wouldn't like if you hang out with them individually but because he vouched for them everyone kind of had to kind of get along with them and try and make it work and they were usually on their best behavior around him as well that also kind of helped but that was something that i really um saw in him and i thought you know what this is what makes you a legend because you just you know you act regular you act chill you're not like wrapped up in your own ego you're not you don't feel like you're too good for people because a lot of these guys you know they don't really do anything substantial for the world in general yes they're doing cool things what they're doing but the way that they act the way that they kind of will big time you and aura you and kind of just you know stunt on you in public will make you feel really shitty but Virgil never did that even though he trapezed and kind of ascended to the pinnacle of fashion and culture and art and everything else in between he was always chill always safe always able to talk to people always able to you know just be approachable and all that malarkey so it's kind of sad that people are saying that that could not be replicated to be honest it's pretty sad and he was the he was the glue to a lot of conflict no, no, and all course, that. you know course, as you can yeah. see that like, soon yes. as he passed a lot of shit fell up Everybody it literally fell out. went it like, like that like, you just seen people that was fake like oh he needed was, just off the like, uh it was, it was just crazy what, but that, what they were saying all like, of that oh, just he, goes to show what kind of like guy he really was and the impact that he had on all of us yeah like like 
you know, this culture in general, mm -hmm. what we call culture, mm -hmm. like, you mm -hmm. know, like he was literally the ring leader. Some that does. Yeah, it's true. He was a ring leader and stuff. But again, I think the great example people can make of him and the legacy that we can probably take forward is just to be nice to people. I think that's always the thing that always disappointed me about the industry and why I probably did take an active step to sort of like step away from the scene and not be involved because I was quite heavily involved, especially at the time I was working for that um, small Nike store in Shoreditch and then, you know, afterwards doing some interning with like um, 12 Bar and all this malarkey and blah, 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 the whole retail in streetwear sneaker scene i don't need to repeat it but i think the reason why i actively took a step away was probably around the same time that i had that bad interaction with the founder of palace when it first started and shit i remember just thinking to myself like why is everyone such a cunt why does everyone have to have such a stinky attitude why is it you walk into a bape store and the guy that runs it is being a cunt the guy that runs palace at the beginning of the f this is like year one year two of the brand you're trying to have a conversation with him and he's treating you like you're like you're chewing gum on the bottom of his foot like everyone just has a really shitty attitude it's like it didn't make any sense to me because i was thinking we're all in this like we're, we're all in this really small niche like there's not many of us, especially in the beginning there wasn't really many of us like you're making your thing and it's like it's your friend or friend that's buying the thing it's not it's, it's not even like you're like worldwide yet it's people within your little community that are also buying it why not just be like cool with the people that are supporting you in the beginning and shit and just be chill nah it's always just like big ego thing and it's like walking around like you're fucking god's gift and i guess it works because in the scene that kind of like attitude you usually have people around you that are also trying to like get near you. So the more you treat them bad, the more you're rude, the more you're standoffish, the more you're kind of, you know, curt, curt, curt to them and, you know, whatever it may be, the more they want you, the more they want to be associated with you. So it does work. I understand why they do it, but I just would rather it not be like that. You know, it doesn't need to be like that. And I think that kind of made, put me off. So when I remember I've made an active decision to so like, you know what? I'm not going to do this whole like networking scene thing. I'm just going to have a regular job. I think that's why I actually did the pivot because I was working a lot in like the cool fashion-y streetwear type of world. But then I decided just to make a pivot and just work a regular job. I was like, I'm just going to get a regular startup job and I'm just going to do that, make my money. And whatever money I make from that, I'm going to pour into my projects on the side or I'm going to pour into buying the stuff that I'm into. But I'm no longer going to, because before the dream was to like work in a store work for a brand work your way up maybe take over maybe start your own brand but you always want to be involved so that when fashion week came around you were at the shows when showroom season was around you were at the showrooms you were at the festivals you know what i mean you were kind of just around but i feel like the best way to do it nowadays especially with the access to the internet and most of the events that you want to go to you can buy a ticket to anyway the best thing to do is just to get yourself a fucking job that pays well so you can in indulge on the things that you like whether it's developing pictures whether it's fucking going on holiday all the time get a job that pays you well and just pay for the just buy the stuff that you like enjoy it yourself at home or enjoy it with other people that are also into what you're into via discord via reddit forums and shit but you don't need to like be in it you know because i think sometimes when you're in it and when you're too close especially fashion it can make you cynical super fast super fast like you're working as a design assistant for some big brand that you love and they're paying you like 13 grand a year after tax you're getting 800 pounds your rent is 750 <laughs> you know you're gonna fall out of love very quickly with fashion but if you decide to work for fucking morrison's or work as does as like a area manager you get to earn a good salary yes it's not working in fashion but you still get to make money and then you get to use that money to buy loads of cool fashion shit to wear, which you can buy to your heart's content. And you also have vacation time. So if you want to go to fucking Paris Fashion Week and see some shows, you can book vacation time and go and attend the fashion shows with money that you earn from your job and have a good life. You don't need to be like always involved and around these fucking lemmings and idiots and have these people that are just insignificant treat you like shit you don't need to you don't need to do it you really don't it's not necessary and unfortunately if you do it too much these people will eventually turn you bad they'll make you like that's what basically happens i think a lot of the time i think a lot of the time people have the experiences that i had where you get treated like shit and then when you finally get put on or when you finally get your opportunity to shine or when you finally make it you then want to make everyone else feel the same way you felt and you make people feel that like shit and the sort of cycle continues but i think someone has to break that and be like you know what i'm gonna break the cycle i'm gonna make it a cool scene to hang out with and maybe do your little you know create your little bubble of a scene your little niche your little scene within a scene and then make that sort of like the quote-unquote safe space that people can come to and hang out in maybe that's the way to go about things maybe who fucking knows but r.i.p virgil i 
Pablo, his legacy, his legacy continues. And I think people will look back on it and his time and what he did and think, you know what, away from all the design, away from all the cool moments, all this malarkey, I think him as a person, as a human, he seemed like a really good dude. And I think people should take that lesson and apply it to whatever they do in their own life, in my opinion. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. 